This is Jennifer Allen reporting for RSNA News. I'm here at RSNA headquarters with Dr. Luciano Prevedello to discuss how artificial intelligence applications will affect radiology. Dr. Prevedello, what are the main trends in AI that will impact medical imaging? So one of the things that I think um, are happening currently is that there's a lot of uh, work being done scientifically to tweak these algorithms and have newer algorithms that will perform better and better as far as classification of diseases from images um, and also uh, to detect lesions in um, x-rays, CT, all the modalities that we as radiologists are very used to. Uh, another type of work that has been going on uh, relates to uh, image quality and um, image acquisition. Um, techniques such as GANs, which stands for Generative Adversarial Networks, uh, will have a huge impact in that field as well. And they will probably uh, allow us to create images, medical images, in a much faster fashion with less data and, and potentially even allow us to uh, discover new things uh, that are embedded in those images that we can only do uh, with, the, with these new tools, with, with the assistance of computers. Another field that uh, has expanding quite uh, tremendously over the, the, uh, the, the, the recent years um, is that uh, typically these tools require a huge amount of data uh, to create these algorithms. Uh, so we're talking about thousands, if not millions of images in order to generate an algorithm. Uh, a lot of work has been done to, uh, to create techniques that do not need uh, as much data. Uh, that would be transfer learning, uh, but even a single shot learning, which is typically what the humans can do. You see once and then you uh, replicate what you uh, understand from that image into other scenarios. Uh, so a lot of work has been done there, which is a huge potential for the field uh, moving forward. And outside of the image analysis, there's also a lot of work. Uh, it's probably the renaissance of uh, um, artificial intelligence in the field of natural language uh, understanding. So basically, uh, collect that information from standard text and try to understand, classify in different ways, uh, interpret that uh, information in a way that we as humans can do, but machines are having the ability uh, to do that in a very sophisticated fashion in the recent years. How will AI improve the quality and efficacy of patient care in the coming years? I think there's several ways in which AI can improve uh, the efficacy of the work that we do and, and the level of service that we provide to our patients. Uh, one way is uh, by improving the, the workflow uh, in the radiology environment. Uh, there, there are tools that can review the images ahead of time and identify critical findings within those images and display them in the work list in a way that we're looking at the ones that require uh, the immediate attention first. By, by doing that, we are targeting uh, the most important ones for uh, and expediting the read and the interpretation process for uh, these urgent cases. Um, the other thing is uh, the assistance on burnout. Uh, I think this is a, uh, something that is real uh, and people are working hard to provide the, the best level of service uh, to patients. And by automating some of the uh, repetitive tasks that we do uh, in our daily basis, uh, AI can provide a huge assistance to our workflow and workload and decrease our workload uh, in that setting. What are some of the challenges radiology faces in embracing AI to its full potential? I think there are several pieces to, to that question. Um, first, what has been very challenging uh, for the community, and not only radiologists that are working in this field, but also data scientists, is to get data. Uh, and not only the data itself, but highly uh, 
uh, or high quality annotated data uh, so these algorithms can be built. That is the number one issue that I see uh, as a barrier uh, to the development of the field. Um, second, there, um, you, need, you need people with knowledge in that area. Um, data scientists know a lot about algorithms, but you need that combination of the clinical expertise, so radiologists in the mix, to be able to build uh, algorithms that make clinical sense that will have a positive impact in the life of our patients. Um, in, in addition to that, there's also um, the implementation of these tools. Uh, you have to apply these tools in a way that they make clinical sense. Uh, one example that I give is if there is uh, an algorithm that performs extremely well uh, to detect pneumonia, uh, but then it, that's the only thing that it does, and you want to apply this algorithm in all chest x-rays, if there is a lesion such as, it, it can be a life-threatening lesion such as a bowel perforation that you can see on the x-ray, and if that algorithm is the sole um, determination of whether that patient has or, or will stay in the hospital or not, obviously that will, be, uh, that will have huge negative consequences because it's not interpreting the image as a whole and it's missing that bowel perforation. So you have to, to know not only to develop these tools, but how to apply them in the clinical setting uh, in order for them uh, to make clinical sense. One of the pieces that we have been studying recently is that uh, we noticed that when we train a model um, on a specific data set, it doesn't necessarily generalize to other data set. In other words, um, models created in one single institution may not generalize to others in the way that we expected. So we still need to understand exactly what are the pieces that are, that are missing in order for them to generalize better. Uh, one, approach, one approach would be uh, to standardize all uh, the acquisitions, but that is very, very difficult to do. The other approach is to having these data sets a representation of all the heterogeneity that we have out there. So we're accounting for that heterogene heterogeneity right from the beginning uh, while we're training these data sets, and then that's very important. The other component is uh, once the model is created is we, we need to, to have ways to have the radiologist interpret that model. One of the downsides of deep learning, at least in the beginning, people were saying that it's a black box. You don't know what's, the, um, what's going on uh, in, in that box. Uh, so how you're going to interpret? Well, after uh, the initial uh, boom of uh, deep learning, there were several techniques that were created to expose uh, some of the areas within the image, for example, uh, that are the focus of the decision making for that algorithm called saliency maps. Uh, so there are several ways and, and there are new ones being created uh, that would allow us as radiologists to really um, open that box and have some visibility to what it's uh, some of the decisions that it's producing. Thank you, Dr. Pravidalo. You can find more news at rsna.org news. Thank you very much.